Did you know that capacitors are used in almost all electronic products in a variety of ways? They are used in the keyboards of our laptops, screens of our iPads, and in the cameras with flash. Hello, welcome to another episode of Physics is Easy with Mr. Jesse. In this tutorial, we are going to cover the following objectives. First, discuss the graph of charge against potential difference, so that is Q versus V, and relate the slope of the graph to its capacitance and area under the graph to the energy stored between the plates of the capacitor. Afterwards, we are going to derive the equation for the energy stored in a capacitor. And to begin with, let us watch this video about the energy stored in a capacitor. Check out this capacitor. Look at what happens if I hook it up to this light bulb. Boom! Yeah, nothing happened because the capacitor is not charged up. But if we hook it up to a battery first to charge up the capacitor, and then hook it up to the light bulb, the light bulb lights up. The reason this happens is because when a capacitor is charged up, it not only stores charge, but it stores energy as well. When we hooked up the capacitor to the battery, the charges got separated. These separated charges want to come back together when given the chance, because opposites attract. So if you complete the circuit with some wires and a light bulb, current's going to flow, and the energy that was stored in the capacitor turns into light and heat that comes out of the light bulb. Once the capacitor discharges itself and there's no more charges left to transfer, the process stops and the light goes out. Now, remember that capacitance or C is equal to Q over V. And you have learned that as the, vo the charge stored in the capacitor increases, this means that the voltage across the pipes of the capacitor also increases, which means to say that the capacitance is actually constant and in order for us to change the capacitance we have to change its physical attributes for example the distance of separation the dielectric or the area of the plates now as far as q or the charge stored and the voltage across the capacitor is concerned there is a direct proportionality that exists between them meaning as charge increases the voltage across the plates of the capacitor also increases now if we look at this graph and we try to solve for the slope and slope is equal to change in y over change in x and the quantity that is on the y-axis is charge or q divided by the quantity on the x-axis which is voltage and q over v is actually equal to capacitance therefore the slope therefore the slope of q versus v graph is capacitance all right so once again the slope of a charge stored in a capacitor versus the voltage across a capacitor is just equal to the capacitance or the ability of the plates to hold a certain amount of charge for a given voltage Another very important quantity that we could derive from the charge versus voltage graph of a capacitor is the energy stored and that is related to the area under the graph. So when I say area, it is actually this area here. And to solve for the area, we have to take note or we have to consider that the area under the curve is actually a triangle. So recall the area of a triangle is equal to one half base times height. <clears throat> Again, the area is the energy, so that's E for energy, is equal to one half. The quantity on the base is voltage. This is our base here. So that's voltage multiplied by the quantity of the height, which is our Q. Or we could rewrite this energy is equal to one half Q times V. In fact, the energy stored in a capacitor, which is electrical potential energy, is just equal to one half Q times V. 
So now let us try to derive these two other equations for electric potential energy or energy stored in a capacitor. So we would use the equation C is equal to Q over V to derive the two other equations. So let's start with E or energy stored in the capacitor is equal to one half Q times V. And here we could say that Q is equal to C times V. So instead of having a one half Q V, I would substitute Q as C uh, V multiplied by V. Then I'm going to have one half C V squared. And that is another equation for energy stored in a capacitor. Also, Another equation that we could get from here is V is equal to Q over C. So I would substitute that from this original equation for the energy stored in a capacitor, which is 1 half Q V. Then I'm going to have 1 half. I will have Q. And my V is equal to Q over C. Then I'm going to have energy is equal to 1 half. Q squared over C. I will be I could rewrite this equation as energy is equal to Q squared over 2C. Similarly, I could also rewrite this equation as E is equal to C V squared over 2. So these equations or these are the other two equations for the energy stored in a capacitor. And that concludes this tutorial. Once again, always remember, physics is easy with Mr. Jesse.